Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be going through a little bit of damage that we've had on this Renault Capture. I'll put a picture up now of the damage before it was repaired so you guys can take a look at that. And what we're going to run through is the paintwork side. So this Renault Capture, it's had this little bit of damage to the arch there. It's not as easy as you think, trying to find that when you're pointing in backwards into a camera. Now, the colour for this is Arizona orange, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, it looks like it could possibly be a little bit of an awkward colour, because although in one flip it looks orange, in the other flip it looks slightly brown. So it could be a little bit of a weird one to blend, so I thought I'd take you guys through the paint stage on this one and also the clear stage so you can take a look at how I'd go about it and how I'm going to approach it and do the job and also what guns and what sort of stuff we're going to use to do it. So first things first, the spray gun that we're going to be using is the Iwata AZ4 Junior. It's ideal for little spot repairs like this. It's such a small amount of damage on this vehicle that we don't really need to be getting the big gun, filling the big gun up and then having to clean the big gun out. So we can just use the little spot gun for this kind of little job. Now I am using our less than all water based system for this. Um, cars especially with colours like this, I prefer to match them off the scheme. Um, rather than just ordering in a standard shade because I know that on something that I felt was going to be an awkward colour um, as far as colour wise went um, obviously our scanner would give us a lot better match now as far as the actual colour went it wasn't a hard colour to match um, we got a really good match off the of scheme so that wasn't an issue but I did find that it was quite bad for coverage so <clears throat> this very first bit here the less than a water based scheme I have found works better if you put one very very fine coat on there that's fully covered so it's covered the whole area and it's sealed that area up and then you just flash that off and then you start putting wet coats on. I find if you try and go too heavy too quick this system it tends to fish eye a lot and you end up with a lot of issues in that first coat so that very very fine almost like micro fine layer on that first layer just to seal everything up and then you can start putting your wet coats on. Now I did think that this would be an awkward colour like I said as far as the colour match went but it did turn out to be just a really bad covering colour so it did take a couple of coats. Now the bonus to the less than all system is that you can load this water base up quite a bit. Obviously you need to be very very careful of your drying times in between so for a job like this or when I'm using the water base I've got the booth temperature internally cranked up to about 28 degrees the airflow from the booth and also the heat along with a little bit of air from the spray gun I will tend to find will dry this less than all system off in maybe a minute two minutes you know it doesn't take a lot of drying whatsoever um, something like the base coat stage on this I probably spent I don't know maybe 10 15 minutes in the booth tops um, and I had to put on quite a few coats I think we went around sort of three or four coats but I could see as it was drying that the color match was really nice so the main part of my effort in the booth rather than blending it was more coloring the repair area up now on our scheme there was no recommendation for a ground coat color or anything like that so it didn't recommend that I used black or white or grey or dark grey or anything like that um, so it just meant that a couple of as you can see here now I'm going quite a lot heavier now with the water trying to really lay that colour up over that area and then I'm just flicking it around and doing the blend as well just to get that coloured up and nicely dialed in then I'll give that a really good flash off in the booth and also a dry down with the air blower just to be safe now for clear I'm going to be using my DVR clear and in the aqua I've just got a tiny little bit of slow thinners or slow reducer depending on where you're from now I'll be using the slow thinners just as a little bit of a blending agent for the clear blend on the bumper you don't necessarily have to use um, fade out thinners personally I find that 
it's 50-50 most of the time whether fade out thinners works nicely or not it has quite a habit with some clear coats of reacting badly and obviously the thinners that are put in the clear can't really react with the thin with the clear coat because it's the same stuff that normally i would put in the the clear itself so i'm not risking any reactions especially on a nice car like this where you know any reaction in this clear coat is going to show up on mile and i've done two recently where I have used fade out thinners and I've had the same problem with both of them back to back so I've just ditched my fade out thinners at this point and I'm just using a little bit of 2k slow reducer now as far as gun settings I've got this on around about 3 quarter fan so that I can keep this fan nice and tight and control where I'm putting the paint a little bit better obviously we've only got a small wing and a small bumper corner to do so I don't want to be throwing this stuff on I've got the air at 2 bar and I've got a thing around about one and three quarter to two turns out on the fluid. This is the final systems clear coat again, and we're just gonna smash this up with two full wet coats. I roughly gave this two to three minutes in between coats, and I've used the Churchill Fast Hardener in it. Now, we did, well, John posted up the other day in the group about switching over to a Churchill Hardener, and some people we're saying, oh, you shouldn't recommend, you know, you shouldn't mix manufacturers' products, which technically is true. Um, so it's not something that I can sort of say to you guys. You definitely should mix manufacturers' products, but I've had no issues whatsoever with using this Churchill hardener in this. I find it dries completely fine. I've had no issues if there's been, say, like a little bit of a sag there with razor razoring it out after it's been baked. So we know it's drying properly. I know everything's working properly. So personally, for me. You know, that's the whole point of the channel is for me to pass on what I have learned or what I have found out best to you guys so you guys can get an idea of what I'm doing maybe differently or what I'm tweaking in my day to day job. Um, because I know, like, John, who does it at home, obviously, he's not doing it every single day. So, you know, like this particular day that I painted this, this was like my second or third car I painted that day. So, you know, in that respect I get a lot of time to test and trial different bits and pieces to find out what works best and I find that this clear coat without using their hardeners is extremely good there's no issue on a nice car like this getting a really nice gun finish like this thing apart from where the clear blend is barely needs touching it can be left gun finish I think there's maybe like one or two tiny nibs in that wing and that's about it so it'll take me like seconds to do a quick nib and buff on this whereas if I use their hardener I'd have to do a full flat and polish which is a waste of time, it's a waste of money and to be quite honest when you can get a really good nice gun finish like that I want to keep it and it does my head in that it, they die off so much now I've got this aqua gun dialed in so that I'm putting the smallest amount of fluid out and I'm using around about 20 to 25 psi so I'm just really lightly dusting this and all I want to see is that little area there just wetting up and wetting across. I don't want to see like a lot of fluid hitting the panel. I just want to literally keep dusting this so that that old clear and new clear becomes like almost one wet, very light wet section. And that will just help smooth in that little clear blend. So a quick polish on there and that will be absolutely spot on. Now again, that's not something that you should do technically. Technically, you should be using, you know, a fade out thinners because that's exactly what they're made for. Does it mean that my way of doing it doesn't work? Well, you know, you've, you guys have seen my work. You know, I wouldn't be doing it if it didn't work. It'd be a pointless step to add into a process. I could just leave it technically and then do a little, you know, flat and polish on that blend. But as you can see, off the gun, nice gun finish, a nice edge on that blend as well. Right, so that's everything all done on this. We've got it all cleared. It's now been baked off. Everything now. It's looking nice. We've got a nice colour match on this corner. Clear's all looking good. So, by a very quick little bit of a polish, that's it on this job now. So that's it for me for this week's video, guys. And I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.